Okay, this is the second part of his instructional methods presentation. So instructional methods part two. So the next, remember we are studying all those points about um, lecturing, demonstrations, collaborative learning, discussions, brainstorming, practice sessions, simulations and games. So now I think we're going to start with practice sessions, learning by doing. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. Practice sessions are learning by doing, are practicing. The word is quite self-explanatory to be honest. So practice sessions are method methodology in which teachers purposely engage with learners in direct experience and focus reflection in order to increase knowledge, develop skills and clarify values. So a method in which teachers engage with learners. So it is an opportunity for students to practice or apply the content presented in theoretical sessions. The power of practice session. Tackling challenging real world problems in a context that models today's dynamic workplace environment. Develop experience and skills. Discover how much you really do know and how to fill in the blanks. Learn to identify novels and create solutions and take calculated risks. Learn how to use feedback to enhance the quality of your ideas. Learn how to work within a team having diverse perspectives and strength. Challenge yourself to go beyond what they initially think and they're capable of doing. Present uh, Present and support your recommendations, ideas, and decision makers. To decision makers. So, practice sessions. Again, reflection is essential. <coughs> Any learning gained by doing will be quickly lost if teachers do not ask students to reflect upon the experience, either through class discussion, a journal, or some type of writing assignment. Reflection on the learning experience of students to not only critically examine and apply what they have learned, but reflection also forces students to re-examine any assumptions they may have that may have had going into the experimental learning activity. So teachers role in practice sessions. Define goals, set mission, present cover story and operating scenarios establish roles, provide resources, provide feedback. Now moving on to discussion. Whole group discussion is a modified form of classroom lecture where the focus is shared between the instructor and the students for information transfer. Typically an instructor will stand before a class to present information for the students to learn but the students will also participate by answering questions and provide example by providing examples. The use of questions. The role of questions is to guide students into discovering new dimensions of a problem or new way of resolving a dilemma. The use of questions. The role of questions is to guide students into discovering new dimensions of a problem or new ways of resolving a dilemma. Some uses of questions include refocusing, presenting contradictions to res resolve, probing for deeper and more through responses, extending the discussion to new areas, passing responsibility to the class. So the strengths and limitations of discussion. The strengths are poor ideas and experience from the group, sorry, pools of ideas and experiences from the group, effective way of analyzing and present uh, a presentation skill or experience allows everyone to participate. Limitations difficult with more than 25 people. A uh, few people may control discussions and others may not participate. Time consuming and can be difficult to keep participants focused. Okay, now brainstorming. 
Brainstorming is a way of allowing learners to think freely about ideas. It is important learning technique because it allows learners to have new ideas without the fear of being wrong. Brainstorming is a list of ideas, thoughts or alternative solutions to focus on specific topic or problem is generated, stimulates thoughts and creativity and is often used along with group discussions. Strengths and limitations. Strengths are allows creative thinking around new ideas, encourages participation, draws on group knowledge and experience. One idea can inspire other ideas. Limitations can be unfocused, may be difficult for participants to think creativity, creatively. Uh, criticism may occur if not facilitated well. Brainstorming guidelines. So selecting an issue, set a limit five or seven minutes, prepare ideas and examples for the group practice facilitation, ask the learners to think about many different ideas as they can, write down all ideas, discuss the ideas, rank in order of importance. Moving on to the next topic, simulation and role play. Role play, learning activity in which students play out roles in simulated situation and relate to one another or more learning objectives. So simulation and role play. Instructional games. Instructional games involve students in decision making roles, competing for certain objectives, reflect society, offers participants the opportunity to experience roles that are present in life. The benefits of simulation and games. Actively involves students, provides immediate feedback, practice of communication skills, high degree of interest and enthusiasm, allows teacher to work with a wide range of students' capabilities at the same time, promote and reward analytically and critical thinking, allow experimentation with the model of the real environment. The limitations of simulation and games. Demands a great deal of imagination. Commercially produced products can be costly. Informal relationships can develop between teachers and students. <coughs> So, introducing and conducting activities. Um, give the rationale, explain why you're doing the exercise, explain the task with complete and detailed instructions, define the context, tell them how they will complete the task, explain what is reported, explain how, the structure, how to structure their responses, monitor the exercise, stay near, the, stay near to the answer questions, Debrief the exercise, highlight the key points of the groups, have given the ideas. So, summary. Telling is not teaching, nor is listening, learning. You must engage participants in learning activities that lead to a higher level of understanding and results in the participant's ability to apply what he learned on the job. Interactive teaching is a two-way process of active participants engage them with each other, the facilitator and the context. I think that's it. Now we're going to do the last one, PowerPoint called assessment.